For some of us, in our worst nightmares, we sometimes get buried alive. In these awful dreams, our fists beat uselessly against the hard wood of the coffin and our heart breaks from the intolerable horror. But believe it or not, it is quite possible that such a nightmare could become a reality. After all, throughout history, people have long passed down chilling, true stories about human beings being buried alive. One such incident occurred in the 1800s in Kentucky. A young American woman by the name of Octavia Smith Hatcher lost her little son. The poor mother was stricken with grief, then fell into a coma and died a few days later. As there was very hot weather that summer, the deceased were immediately interred. However, soon many citizens were struck by a similar ailment. The patients fell into a coma for several days, but then came to their senses and recovered. Doctors suggested that they may have been suffering from a sleeping sickness brought on by the bite of the tsetse fly. Seeing what was occurring, Octavia's husband suspected that they might have buried his spouse alive and immediately asked that her body be exhumed. When the coffin was opened, the man's worst fears were confirmed. His wife's face was twisted in horror. She had scratched the lid of the coffin in despair, clawing away the flesh from her bones, her fingers reduced to just skeletal nubs. Judging by the written evidence, there were quite a few people buried alive over the years. In 1786, one Professor Tours was present during the demolition of a Paris cemetery from the 14th century. After the excavation of the multiple graves, the professor saw that many of the skeletons showed signs of having been moving in the coffins. To wit, a number of those believed dead had actually been interred while still living. Such stories are beyond creepy, but imagine what the relatives of those buried alive go through. In 1817, author John Snart, in his book The Thesaurus of Horror, spoke of a certain Mr. Corniche who had died of a fever. After the end of the funeral that evening, the gravediggers, who had perchance remained in the cemetery, heard groans from under the ground. They quickly dug up the fresh mound of earth, but they were too late. The man had already died in horrifying agony, with bloody scratches and scrapes over his entire body resulting from his struggles to escape. The sister of the unfortunate man was so afraid of repeating the same fate as her brother that she arranged to have her head cut off after her death, thus assuring that she was truly deceased. In those days, such fears were fully justified. If a human body became cold and the heart stopped beating, it was considered dead. This did not take into account a number of distinctions that we are now aware of. For example, sometimes in a living person with severe hypothermia, the body temperature can drop to a critical point of 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Conversely, in a person who has died of cholera, the temperature may rise for a short time and during an extremely lethargic sleep, the heart sometimes beats so quietly that even experienced doctors with stethoscopes cannot hear it. It is quite difficult for any doctor to recognize the weak signs of life in, for example, a patient who has been asphyxiated, suffered carbon monoxide poisoning, has endured extreme freezing, heat stroke, been struck by lightning, has a concussion, or is even suffering from hysteria. Often, only the decomposition of the body conclusively proves the person's true demise. Due to this, in a number of countries, funerals were allowed only after three days after the death of a person. But before there were refrigerators and in extreme heat, the body could quickly begin to smell unbearably. In addition, in ye olden days, families were forbidden to work until the deceased was interred. Not surprisingly, those who were poor were in a hurry to get the corpse buried as quickly as possible, even ahead of the three-day minimum. These days, doctors have numerous advanced diagnostic methods and techniques to serve them, and it seems they shouldn't be able to make mistakes. Nevertheless, social networks and news sources still periodically blow up with dreadful stories of those who have been buried alive. 
Modern day doctors sometimes incorrectly declare death due to their low qualifications or even simple negligence. Doctors in the Brazilian city of Riachão das Neves declared 37 year old Rosangela Almeida Santos dead from sepsis. It was a mistake. At least that's what the relatives of the woman say. Some 11 days after the funeral, they were informed that screams had been heard coming from her grave. The relatives unearthed the body and found fresh, bloody wounds on Rosangela's forehead and hands, where she had been prying and scratching at the coffin lid and banging her head in terror and frustration. In addition, her body was still warm, and many of the nails on the lid of the coffin had been shaken loose. Fortunately, such stories occasionally have a happy ending. Thus, it was in 1993 that 24-year-old South African Sifo William Madlethshi and his bride were involved in a car accident. The bride survived, but the unfortunate bridegroom was declared dead. The body was taken to the morgue, where it was placed in a metal box. After several days, the man came to and managed to get mortuary workers to open the metal casket. Unfortunately, his bride did not return to poor Sifo, having decided that he had obviously turned into a zombie. By the way, this is nothing compared to what they did to those thought dead and returned to life in the Middle Ages. If those unfortunate enough to have been buried alive suddenly came to life, they were considered to be vampires and their heads were cut off. This was due to the superstition that the dead at night would rise from the grave to kill people and drink their blood. There are other instances of premature interment. No one, of course, considered the 19-year-old Frenchman Angelo Hayes to be a vampire. But he was, one could say, resurrected from death. This unusual situation occurred when the guy was buried after his supposed death in a car accident. However, shortly before this unfortunate happenstance, Angelo's father had insured his son's life for 200,000 francs. It looked suspicious, and the insurance company insinuated that he had possibly killed his son for the money. A few days later, at the request of the company, the body was exhumed, and it turned out that the boy's heart was still beating, if barely. After recovering, the enterprising Angelo began to produce special coffins from which one could escape if, perchance, one is prematurely entombed. But seriously, what must one do if one is buried alive in a most ordinary wooden coffin six feet under the earth and no one is coming to help? In Quentin Tarantino's thriller Kill Bill, the main character Beatrix, without undue difficulty, cracks open the lid of her underground prison with her fist climbs up through the earth, and ultimately escapes. In real life, things aren't quite so simple. On the popular American program Mythbusters, they decided to try and recreate Beatrix's hellish experience. They found that only after over 600 very powerful blows with a hand could a small hole be made in the coffin lid. And even after this, these busters of myth only managed to rise from the grave by about 60 centimeters, or about two feet. That is, only about a third of its depth. One might wonder, why even bury a body at such a depth under a thick layer of earth? But this has its own explanation. Back in 1655, at the behest of the mayor of London, grave diggers began to dig six-foot-deep graves in cemeteries in order not to spread the bubonic plague that was then raging in England. For our friends who use the metric system, six feet is about two meters. Nowadays, most countries still recognize this depth as optimal. Nevertheless, according to experts, there is a chance to get out even from such a deep grave. If you wake up in a dark, narrow space in which you can neither sit down nor move, the main thing is not to get hysterical. The fact is that there's very little oxygen under the ground, and in a normal coffin or box of similar size, said oxygen will last for about 40 minutes. In a panic, one's breathing will become more intense, and the oxygen will run out that much faster. So, first, feel about for the walls to get a sense of where exactly you are situated. Then pull some fabric over your head and tie it off tightly. 
This mask will protect your lungs from inhaling dust and dirt and increase your chances of survival. After that, study the lid of the coffin. If it is not already split under the weight of the earth, it will have to be broken through. To do this, hit it at the center, but not with your hand. Use your feet. As soon as the earth begins to fall into the coffin, rake it away so that you still have room to move. Then lift the lid using the side of your head. Push out of the coffin and row upwards with all of your might. In the end, you just might be able to get to the surface, where you can now celebrate your new second birthday. But if for some the idea of being buried alive is a true nightmare, others voluntarily bury themselves for several hours or even days. Lovers of such endeavors revel in spending time inside a coffin, claiming that it gives them unsurpassed and unrivaled emotional satisfaction. True, once in a while such amusements end badly for the practitioners. In 2011, a 35-year-old resident of Russia decided to bury himself for a whole day in order to reflect on life in complete silence. With the help of a friend, he lay down in a coffin, which he had previously placed in a grave which he had dug himself. This thrill-seeker took with him a breathing tube, a bottle of water, and a mobile phone. After that, the friend of the man buried in his hole in the ground left. A few hours later, the man in the grave called his friend and said that he was feeling fine. And the next morning, having dug up the coffin, his friend found a corpse in it. It turned out that that night there had been a heavy rain which blocked the air duct and the poor adventurous man had suffocated. However, these staged funerals are usually held without complications and generally have a number of specially trained experts on duty. And some of the more advanced of these professional zombies have contrived to safely visit the grave over a dozen times. A Russian blogger who goes by the name Gabar even took a video camera into the coffin with him, transmitting his experience live to the internet. At the end of his self-imposed imprisonment, he noted that he experienced a variety of astonishing sensations. But most importantly, he realized how happy he was at the end of the experiment to once again stand on firm ground with both feet firmly planted. What other unbelievable predicaments can a person find themselves in and how can they escape? I will investigate and report to you, dear viewers, in future episodes. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and press the bell to get notified of future episodes as soon as they come out so you won't miss a minute of the most interesting mysteries in the universe. And don't forget to tell your friends about us as Riddle is even better together.